All right, so great. Uh, today we talk about lecture number 20, which is the, the second lecture on NDT. Okay. So last time we talked talk about uh, ultrasound. Okay. And uh, today we start with impact method. Okay. So impact method also use a mechanical wave to check the materials such as concrete and steel. Okay. Uh, this method, uh, we use tapping, such as using a hammer, or we can use uh, drag a steel chain, we call that. Uh, chain dragging, okay, on the surface of the concrete and listen to the pitch or the frequency of the sound, okay. A high frequency will indicate uh, the concrete has good quality. Uh, if the concrete has low quality, such as uh, honeycombing or delamination, then we're gonna hear a low frequency pitch. So that means probably we have something below the surface of concrete, okay? So we can use hammer or drag the chain over large areas of the concrete. Just by listening to the pitch, uh, we can do a quick assessment of the condition of the concrete, okay? But uh, this result will depending on the knowledge level of operator, okay? Uh, if the operator is well trained, uh, she or he can eliminate the zones of high and low frequency uh, very fast. Okay. So again, the skill level is very important. Uh, and this method does not provide quantitative information. Just by listening to the pitch, uh, we know where the concrete may have problems, but we do not know how, uh, you know, what exactly information about the damage, okay? So no quantitative information on the damage inside the concrete. So that is the, the drawback of this method. Uh, actually for the hammer and the chain dragging method, uh, we have ESTM standard method on this. So we use this method uh, mainly to assure the reproducibility of the test. Okay. And also somehow can quantify the surface disturbance generated by impact on concrete. Okay. Uh, we need a better control impact force so we can better quantify find damage inside the concrete. So that comes with the next method which is called impact echo method, okay? The so impact echo method use a well-controlled force, such as a steel ball, okay? Uh, the energy and the force of the steel ball impact on the surface of concrete is very well controlled. And then uh, we use a sensitive broadband transducer uh, on the surface, and also we can analyze the waveform in a frequency domain. Okay. So compared with the hammer of chain dragging method, the impact S echo method is can be much well quantified. Okay, so this is a simple setup of the impact echo method. Uh, the steel ball will be impact on the surface of the concrete with well controlled impact force and energy. And the receiver will receive the reflection uh, if the wave meet the internal floor it will reflect back if there's no floor the wave will reach to the bottom and then reflect back okay so we can use this method to detect internal floor depending on the change of the frequency we can also use this method to check the depth Uh, the, the depth of member uh, and also the location of the floor.
Uh, last time we talked about when we use a hammer to impact on the surface of concrete, uh, we generate not only one type of waves, but uh, at least three types of waves. Okay. So they are, uh, you know, the surface wave, right? we call that. Another name for that is relay wave. And also we have a uh, P wave, which is due to compression of the materials. Okay. And also we have R wave, which is due to uh, elastic response to shear of the wave. So there's three types of wave. Uh, surface wave can be used to check the inside floor of materials. Okay. Uh, but because the surface wave cannot penetrate very deep, but they can penetrate a certain depth. Okay. So sensing its property under a certain depth. And depending on the wavelength and the frequency, the wave with a short wavelength may not be able to sense a discontinuity deep inside the concrete because uh, with a short wavelength we have uh, high frequency. The increase of frequency, we're going to reduce the penetration. So energy of the wave will dissipate very quickly. So the wave cannot penetrate deep. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if we use long wavelengths, okay, uh, then the wave can penetrate deeper, but uh, the resolution view will be reduced. Reduce the resolution. And the change of velocity uh, with wavelengths can also be used to, to check the layers, the thickness of layers of the structures. Okay. And we call this method uh, spectral analysis of surface wave, really wave. And here is the a setup for the surface uh, spectral analysis of surface wave method or SASW method. Okay. Again, we impact the surface of the concrete, okay. and then we based on the surface wave, the relay wave. Okay. Uh, and here is spectral analysis uh, analyzer. Okay. We have a receiver one and we have receiver two. And distance between these two receivers are well controlled. Okay. Uh, there are two receivers with a no distance, so we can easily measure the time and also the distance. Okay. So and based on this information, we can calculate the velocity. The velocity. Okay. Uh, if we have multiple layers, such as in this case, uh, the way you can catch the depths of the layers and also detect the floor. All these methods are based on mechanical waves. Uh, also, the next one. Okay, acoustic emission method. Uh, this method is similar to the impact echo method or the hammer method as we discussed before, but the source of the wave are different. So, so acoustic emission method is an uh, entity method, uh, but the noise is created when material deform or fracture. So in other words, uh, the noise uh, or the energy source, the sound source, is generated by the material itself. Okay, uh, not by hammer, not by a uh, steel ball. Okay. So 
So that's the major difference between uh, a cost emission method and uh, the impact echo method. And the NDT instrument only retrieve, reflection, and also analyze the wave. Okay. Uh, acoustic emission waves, uh, such as uh, generated when the concrete crack, it will propagate through the materials and can be detected on the surface by a sensor. So the sensor should be on the structure all the time, uh, days, weeks, or even months, because we are not sure when the caustic emission will be generated, when the concrete will be cracked. So the sensor will be there for a long time. When there's a, a caustic emission, uh, that will be catch up by the sensors. Okay. So the sensors will turn the vibration, a mechanical vibration into the electrical signals. And we call that acoustic emission master uh, because uh, most of the frequency can be here, but it's not always. Uh, if it's beyond 20 kHz, uh, which can also, it is also possible within this master, uh, it is not audible anymore. So as we can see here, uh, the receiver will only passively receive the uh, signal. If we have crack generated inside the materials, uh, such as loading or impact, so that a cost emission wave will be received by the receiver. Okay. So again, the receiver will stay in position for a long time. Okay, just wait for the signal to come. Again, uh, there's a major difference between a caustic emission method and the ultrasound method. Okay, so in the ultrasound method, uh, a signal is generated by the sensor into the materials. And also the sensor, uh, we have a receiver, receive the reflect reflected uh, wave or the wave goes through uh, the materials. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, a cost emission method, uh, the signal is generated by the material itself. Okay. So that's the major difference between these two types of method. And here shows the typical result of a cost emission. Uh, we can analyze the times when the wave arrive, uh, the amplitude, okay, uh, and also the frequency of the wave. So again, all these measures we discuss, such as impact measure, uh, ultrasound, or cost emission are based on mechanical wave, mechanical wave. Okay. Uh, then let's jump to another topics. Uh, before we do that, uh, let's remember we talk about polarization resistance and also half cell potential master. So these two master is covered in lecture number 13, uh, which is uh, durability of concrete. Uh, in that lecture, we talk about corrosion of reinforcement concrete. And at the end of this lecture, we talk about these two NDT measure to check uh, corrosion probability and also the rate of rebar corrosion in concrete. Okay. So for half cell potential measure, uh, we use that to check the probability. But for linear polarization measure, resistance measure, we use that to check how fast the corrosion is going on right now, currently. Okay. So uh, we will not repeat these two methods today, but they are belong to NDT, of course. All right, this is the half cell potential. We show these slides before. 
Uh, the next several methods uh, gonna be based on EM wave or electromagnetic wave. Okay, uh, the first one is called cover meter. Okay, or eddy current method. Okay. So a uh, cover meter can be used to locate uh, the location of the steel rebar uh, in reinforced concrete, or the depth of the rebar, or even uh, the size of the rebar. Okay. We can also use this method to estimate uh, the thickness of concrete, uh, the concrete cover over the, the reinforcement. Uh, we can also easily use this method to check, uh, for example, the thickness of paint on steel. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a moment. But this method, the cover meter method, uses low frequency EM wave. On the surface of concrete, uh, it is very easy to, to detect uh, metal inside the concrete okay? because the difference for concrete and metal in these two properties are very big. Okay? This is the one is electrical conductivity. The other one is magnetic permeability. For these two properties, uh, concrete and steel or other metals are very different. A steel, for example, has much higher electrical conductivity and magnetic permeability than concrete. So uh, the car meter is very, very sensitive to change of this property, so you can detect uh, the presence of steel or other metals. Okay. So this is uh, a setup for car, car meter. Uh, we have ferromagnetic cores here, and also we have AC source to generate circulation flux. Okay, so this is circulating magnetic current. Circulating magnetic current. Also, we have a sensing cone here, uh, which can we have a sensing core uh, can, can check uh, the change of electrical uh, current change. If we have steel. Uh, We're going to generate a secondary mag magnetic field. Okay. As you can see from here, a secondary magnetic field will be generated if there's a steel in the magnetic field. So that will change the electrical current, which is called eddy current. And that change in eddy current can be detected by the sensory coin. Okay, so when there's a mantle near the magnetic current, uh, we're going to have a change in eddy current, which can be detected by the sensory coin. Okay, uh, we can use this method to do not only checking the depths and the location of rebar, but also do other things such as you know, the surface surface crack in steel. Or we can check a uh, thickness of paint on steel member. And also, of course, location, depth, and uh, diameter of rebar. So location, depth, oh, sorry. and oh.
and diameter of rebar. Okay. Uh, but for rebar, it cannot give all this three information. Okay. Uh, for the car meter, uh, generally it can give either location or depth or the diameter, but it is uh, very difficult to give all the information from the car meter. All right. So the car meter is used low frequency EM wave. Okay. Uh, the next one, uh, the GPR, a ground penetration radar, use a much higher frequency EM wave to check a structure. Okay. So ground penetration radar use again EM wave, but with higher frequency, okay. uh, 50 to 1500 megahertz to probe the surface, uh, subsurface of concrete. GPR will send EM pulse, okay, which is only last very short period of time, one to three nanoseconds, okay, and analyze the echoes reflect back. Okay, uh, if, for example, the frequency is one gigahertz. Okay, uh, the penetration can be as deep as four hundred millimeter. This is like a, a fifteen, uh, around fifteen inch. It's not very deep because uh, when we increase when we increase the frequency, the energy dissipated is uh, faster. So the penetration is not very ideal. But as we can imagine, the resolution is pretty high due to the high frequency. And the result of GPR is affected by these two parameters. One is the electrical conductivity. And the other one is dielectric constant. If two materials, such as concrete and steel, concrete and steel has very different electrical conductivity and dielectric constant. So GPR can easily tell where the steel is inside concrete. Okay. But if concrete has similar electrical conductivity with other materials, such as alloys. Let's say we have voids, empty voids in concrete. Okay. Because air and concrete has very similar electrical conductivity, so GPR cannot tell the difference between air and concrete. So it cannot detect uh, air field voice very efficiently. If the air voice is filled with water, then GPR can easily detect it. Why? Because water and concrete has different electrical conductivity and dielectric constant. Okay. okay we can use GPR to test uh, location, depth of rebar, uh, and also uh, even the water content, uh, degree of hydration, or even presence of chloride, uh, because again, GPR is very sensitive to water inside the concrete due to the difference in this property for water and concrete. Okay. So we can use GPR machine moving along the surface of the concrete. Okay, um, actually the machine does not have to touch the surface of concrete. Okay, so this is the transmitter and uh, 
also gets a receiver typically in the same unit, in the same unit. And the wave is sound at very high frequency for very short period of time, the EM pulse will be sent inside the material and give that back if we have difference in dielectric constant. Okay. <laughs> this is the setup of using GPR to detect uh, rebar. Okay. Uh, we have rebar here. And this is the transmitter, the TX the transmitter. The receiver is here, it's in the same unit. We can move the GPR machine. Uh, sometimes it's our wheel along the surface. Okay. And it can detect the depth of the rebar. Uh, for example, here. is the location of the rebar, okay? And we can see the, the distance between the rebars and also the depth of the rebars. But if we have multiple layer of rebar, then the rebar underneath the first layer, the second layer of rebar may be shadowed by the first layer of the rebar. Uh, we can also use ground penetrating radar to detect voice. Uh, so, okay. So this is set up for the GPR. Uh, the GPR machine is on a wheel, okay, uh, which can go along the surface of concrete, and uh, it can detect the depths of the rebar. This is a rebar, this is another. Okay. And also by going through uh, the surface, uh, we can see uh, almost 3D image of the layout of the rebar. Okay, this is a plan view and this is uh, a side view. Okay, we can see the rebar here and here. Uh, the next method is infrared thermography. Okay, it's just uh, we use infrared camera to look at the structure. We can detect, for example, the leakage of the of the roof. Okay. So when the concrete has high porosity, uh, they're gonna have different thermal properties. Okay, such as thermal conductivity and also heat capacity. Okay. So under heat flux, uh, it will produce zones with different temperature. Okay. Uh, and that can be detected by a thermal camera. So here shows uh, a concrete with a floor. Uh, look at the direction of heat flow. Okay. Uh, if we put the camera here, because air has very bad thermal conductivity, and because the heat flow is from top to bottom, so the hot spot will be above the air field voice. So the camera will see a hot spot above the voice. Okay. But if the heat flow is from bottom to up, and if we have camera here, then we're gonna see a cold spot here because again uh, the air field voice will block the heat flow. This method is only sensitive to surface crack. Okay. 
and also it is sensitive to crack orientation. If the crack is perpendicular to flow of heat, so the crack can effectively block the heat flow. But if the crack is in this direction, uh, it cannot block the heat flow as effective. So crack orientation is also important. So applications, we can use this method to, to check delamination. And also the quality of the bonding. And the equation for check this is this. Sigma. Okay. So R is the thermal radiance, uh, which can be detected by the thermal camera. Okay, uh, which is in the unit of watts per square meter. Uh, E is called emissivity uh, constant. So that's a constant. Uh, for concrete, this value is around 0 0.95 for concrete. Uh, this is emissivity. Sigma is also constant. And T is the temperature in Kelvin. Okay, so we see a correlation between the temperature T and the thermal radiance, uh, which can be detected by the thermal camera. Okay, that's, that's how we can use this to detect the change in temperature, which is very sensitive because here is temperature to the power of We can use thermal camera to check, you know, delamination uh, when the light is not well. Or here uh, to check leakage of the roof. Okay. Uh, this is from outside. Uh, if there's a roof leakage, the temperature in the areas of leakage will be higher. So we can easily detect where the window or roof is leaking, so we can do the repair uh, based on that. All right. Okay, so the next method is called tomography of concrete. Uh, probably we have heard about that. Uh, words CT. This is computerized tomography. Okay, so uh, not only can be used in hospital, but we can also use that for concrete. So the tomography, the words coming from Greek words. Tomo means slices. Okay, so we use uh, X-ray, sometimes gamma ray, to take slice of a specimen. Uh, in our case, the concrete and then we generate a 3D image of the specimen. Okay, so we need the help of computer. So that's why come the name computer tomography or CT. Okay. Uh, mostly X-ray is used, but sometimes gamma ray is also used. Again, uh, a 3D image can be reconstructed from the slice of picture. The radiation source uh, is rotated around the structure for full 360 degree. And then at each source position, uh, attenuation of radiation penetrating through the material is measured and then uh, a 2D image will be generated, and then the computer will generate a 3D image based on these many slices. Okay, 
So the slices can be parallel or could be 300 degree. So this is X-ray source. A detector can either rotate around the specimen or the X-ray source of detecting can be, you know, move parallel. And uh, here is a CT image, which is on the right. Okay, you can see an uh, image of unloaded fiber in force concrete cylinder. So we can see the fibers okay. inside the concrete. Uh, the picture on the left is really graphic, uh, which is a 2D image. Uh, the CT is basically a, a 3D image, um, much well defined. Okay, and this is sort of the image of loaded fiber. Okay, the fiber is broken somewhere. On the left is a really graphic picture, a 2D image. Okay. Uh, this is uh, micro tomography. The uh, resolution is very high, 2.2 millimeter, 200 micrometer. Okay, so we can see a, a well defined uh, picture of uh, a concrete specimen. And here shows a 3D tomography. Okay, so very well defined location of the rebars. Okay, and also uh, inside, uh, let me see uh, the rebar on the other side. This is original specimen. Compared to a 2D radiography, a 3D tomography is uh, much better. Okay, now this method, uh, as we can see, can only be used in the lab, cannot be used in the field. We can also use very short wave tomography. Uh, this is uh, microwave, uh, backscattering microwave tomography. Uh, the frequency is 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. Okay. So very high frequency. Uh, the wavelength is about one meter to one millimeter. Okay. Uh, for 300 megahertz, the wavelength is one meter. For 300 gigahertz, one millimeter is the frequency. Okay. So a microwave camera can also be used to check the inside of concrete. Okay. So this is like example of a setup for microwave cameras, uh, the transmitter, and the receiver are all in the one unit. All right, so we talk about uh, microwave camera, uh, tomography, uh, ground penetration radar, or color meter. So these methods are based on uh, electromagnetic waves. Okay. So uh, we have finished uh, the discussion on all, all type of NDD method. Okay. So there's a many different type of NDD test, and each type uh, will be suitable depending on what uh, specific job we want to use okay. uh, this method. Okay. No one NDD method is better than others. Okay. So depending on the job, we need to choose the right type of NDT Master to use. Okay, okay and finally, uh, concrete inspection typically performed as combination approach. We use visual inspection together with non-destructive testing, and also semi-destructive testing, and together with uh, a typical destructive test such as uh, crash assembly. Okay. All right, so that's the end for this lecture.
uh, questions.